Good evening, everyone. My name is Bill Flanagan, and I'm the President and Vice Chancellor of the University of Alberta. And it is my great honor to welcome all of you to tonight's concert in Convocation Hall at the University of Alberta's North Campus. Whether you're joining here in person or online, thank you for joining us and standing with us in our show of support and solidarity with the people of Ukraine. The University of Alberta's strong ties to Ukraine and the Ukrainian-Canadian community have been forged over decades of partnership and collaboration. Together, we've, we have advanced, preserved, and disseminated knowledge about the history, politics, and culture of Ukraine. As we continue to watch the increasing devastation in Ukraine, our hearts go out to our many colleagues and friends in Ukraine and to all Ukrainians as they bravely withstand Russian attacks. We condemn Russia's actions and stand proudly with Ukraine. Since the launch of the war, many individuals and offices at the University of Alberta have sprung into action in a broad effort to respond and support those affected. This concert is a powerful example. Colleagues in our Department of Music and the Department of Modern Languages and Cultural Studies moved quickly to pull together a remarkable slate of musical talent. The musicians on the program agreed to participate without hesitation. Our goal tonight is to raise funds for the Canada-Ukraine Foundation, an organization that has been working over the last several months to identify partners on the ground who can deliver aid to the communities and people who need it. Because of that groundwork, the Foundation has moved very quickly to send humanitarian aid to Ukraine. But the need is great with an overwhelming number of people under bombardment and the numbers of refugees growing exponentially every day. People's access to food, water supplies, power, medicine, and other daily necessities is being stripped away. Your support tonight matters. As a university, we have a special concern for the fate of research colleagues, students, and scholars. So we are expediting applications from Ukrainian sim students and simplifying do documentation requirements. We will be waiving tuition fees and providing living costs for UK Ukrainian students affected by war. We are also working to support Ukrainian scholars displaced by war, and we've set up an emergency fund to support the areas of greatest need for impacted students and scholars. I want to thank William Street and Andre Talpash from the Department of Music for their leadership in organizing this concert and the Faculty of Arts. Uh, De uh, Dean Steve Stephen Patton for his immediate support. And a big thank you to all of the others who have worked so quickly to make this happen. And thank you especially to our musicians for so generously donating their time and talent. So on behalf of the University of Alberta, I want to thank all of you for joining us here tonight. We are deeply grateful for all the work that so many in our community have done and will continue to do in support of Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. My name is Steve Patton. I'm the Interim Dean of Arts here at the University of Alberta. We're here tonight because of a horrific war. I think back to the time before February 24th, as Putin amassed troops and military hardware. A full-scale invasion seemed almost unreal, something that I couldn't imagine. In the first days of the invasion, I thought to myself about the threats to Ukrainian sovereignty, the threats to territorial integrity, and the implications for democracy in Ukraine and beyond. Over the past 17 days, my thoughts have really shifted from those high-minded principles. My thoughts have shifted to the horrific devastation and the impact on people's lives as we've seen a terrible loss of life, over two million refugees and families torn apart. 
This is truly a humanitarian crisis. And we're here tonight to respond to that humanitarian crisis, to raise funds for the Canada-Ukraine Foundation's humanitarian appeal. While our thoughts are with the people of Ukraine, I also want to acknowledge the impact that this war is having on members of the University of Alberta community. There's an awful lot of people here at the university and across the city of Edmonton and across Alberta who have friends and family and colleagues in Ukraine, people who are touched, touched in ways that those of us who are not connected can hardly imagine. The stress has been constant and it's been almost unbearable for some people I know who have family in Ukraine. So while we're here to raise money and we're here to think about the devastation in Ukraine, I also want our thoughts to go out to the people in our own community who are touched by this war. The University of Alberta is a scholarly community and our mission is to generate knowledge and disseminate that knowledge. And even before Putin's invasion, the University of Alberta researchers and faculty members who have connections with Ukraine and study Ukrainian-related issues were stepping forward as public scholars and they were speaking to the issues that drove to this war and the potential implications of such an invasion. They've been providing historical perspective and insightful analysis and they've been supported by a community of scholars, a community of scholars that is rooted in the Canadian Institute of Ukrainian Studies, the Cool Folklore Centre, and supported by the Cool Institute for Advanced Study. Scholars and researchers like David Marples, Yars Balan, Natalia Kanenko Friesen, and many others have contributed to our understanding of this war, and they've tried to bring their scholarly knowledge an analysis to the things that really matter in a horrific situation like this. They've been doing media interviews, they've been writing for popular audiences, but they've also been hosting scholarly conferences and panels to discuss the war, to discuss Putin's invasion. One really interesting thing that people might want to take a look at is CIUS's Did You Know CIUS Answers. It's a daily video series responding to questions about Ukraine and about the war against Ukraine. And if you go online and just Google, did you know CIUS, you'll find those video clips. They're really informative, really helpful. They're exactly the kind of contributions that scholars need to make at this sort of time. But we're here tonight to raise money because this is a humanitarian relief concert. We're here to listen to some fantastic performances, but also to give, to give in a way that'll make a difference. So I want to encourage you not just to give what you gave when you came in the door, if you're here in person, but to go online. A quick Google of Canada Ukraine Foundation will take you straight to their website where you can give to their humanitarian relief appeal. You can also do things like go to CanadaHelps.org. They have a Ukrainian page which has all sorts of options where you can give to the UNHCR, to the Red Cross, to many different organizations that are trying to make a difference. Whether you're able to give twice what you paid for the ticket here tonight, whether you're able to give a few hundred dollars, or whether you're able to give thousands, I think it's really important for us to take seriously what this is about, and that is to raise money to deal with a humanitarian crisis. It's going to take millions to make a difference in a crisis of this proportion. There are a lot of people that I want to say thank you for tonight's event. Thank you too for tonight's event. Andrei uh, Talpash, Ala Nadashkivska, Bill Street. They were three of the key organizers who launched this event. The many performers that you'll see here tonight who are giving generously so that you can be here and to raise our awareness and to encourage us to give. I want to thank them. And there's a lot of people working behind the scenes that need to be thanked as well. Russ Baker, Candace Stollery, Claire Peters, Cindy Anderson, and others, including Josh McIntosh and Emily Pohl 
have all made a difference. They've come together as part of the Faculty of Arts community to make sure that this event would be a success. And I want to thank you for being here, and I want to thank you for giving to this really important cause. Thanks. Good evening. My name is William Street and I am the chair of the Department of Music here at the University of Alberta. Under other circumstances, I would be so pleased to welcome you to our first post-COVID concert here in Convocation Hall. Unfortunately, under the current circumstances, while I am delighted to see you, I am, like you, overwhelmed and shocked by the unique challenges the Ukrainian people have had thrust upon them in what we all see as a horrific display of barbarism by Russia. The rest of the world, for the most part, stands by and watches. But I'm so pleased that you are not, as you have joined us here to share in an evening of music and solidarity in support of the Ukrainian people. I greatly admire the singer-songwriter James Taylor. He was one of the first to speak out against Russia on March 4th, just eight days ago. He said in part, We must be united in our universal rejection of this travesty. The world must insist that this abomination cannot stand. Civilization itself is at stake. Putin's war is the categorical and polar opposite of what the world needs now. I want to thank in particular Dr. Andrei Talpash, Russ Baker and Patrick Strain from the Department of Music, and Dr. Ala Nadashkivska, Chair of the Department of Modern and languages and cultural studies for their amazing leadership and coordination in organizing this event. As well, I thank the Department of Art and Design and the Office of the Dean of Arts for their technical support. It was only one short week ago that Alla and I discussed this event's possibility. Tonight, I invite you to open your hearts and your wallets by donating generously to the Canadian Ukrainian Foundation in support of the plight of the Ukrainian people. Please do not be silent but speak out on the topic of the ruthless and barbaric acts of this and all war, and please donate generously. We cannot get aid to everyone, but we can start by getting help to some. Please enjoy the concert as I now pass you over to this evening's hosts, Dr. Andrei Talpash and Andrei Halachevsky. Street for your words of support and attendance in person and virtually. My name is Andriy Talpash and I teach music theory and composition here at the university's Department of Music. My co-master of ceremony, Andriy Hladyshevsky, <laughs> uh, is a lawyer and involved in several Ukrainian choirs and heavily involved in the Ukrainian community. This is an event to raise money for an incredibly important cause. All proceeds from this concert will go to the Canada-Ukraine Foundation, as you've heard, to support the existential disaster the country of Ukraine and its people presently face. I encourage you, those here in person and those watching uh, this event live streaming on YouTube, I encourage you, please donate if you haven't already done so, or do so again to the Canada-Ukraine Foundation. Please visit their website, donate generously, and enter in the message box during the online donation process that your donation is related to this event. This concert presents various forms of Ukrainian music, from folk to liturgical, from centuries old to modern, Ukrainian spoken word by contemporary authors, and even a couple of works composed by non-Ukrainians that evoke potent emotions. The first musical group to perform is Viter Folk Choir. This is a very busy choir that performs numerous events every year as a combined choir and dance ensemble. Tonight, they present two works, uh, which each delivers the sentiment of identity. Please welcome Viter Choir, led by Lesia Pohoreski.
the choir a hand for standing all that time. <laughs> I think so. Good.
see the masks. I'm a triple vax, but I'm also a triple alumnus of the University of Alberta, uh, a wonderful world-class university that once again is showing leadership in this world. Our next two performers are going to bring a genre of music that is extremely important to the Ukrainian people. Marsha Ostashowski is an adjunct professor of ethnomusicology and is dedicated to investigating the creative cultural expression of communities across Canada as well as internationally. She contributes collaborative research in the area of ethnomusicology, serves on graduate supervisory committees, and shares her expertise in research areas including Canadian heritage music and Ukrainian music. She will be accompanied by Dr. Andriy Hornyatkevich, a long, long uh, multi-decades professor here at this university. Dr. Hornyakevich will be performing today on the bandura, the national instrument of Ukraine. This tradition uh, of Ukrainian kobzari, the word kobzar is a sacred word to Ukrainian culture. It basically really means the man who plays the kobza, the professional uh, Kobzar tradition was established during the Hetmanet era, Hetmanet era around the 16th century in Ukraine. Kobzars accompanied their singing music as bards, the bards of Ukraine. They would go from village to village with news, with music, they would bring uh, world news from abroad, and they would also, if you, if you will, be the glue between Ukrainian settlements throughout Ukraine. Uh, at the turn of the 19th century, uh, the Kobzars and the Kobzar tradition was professionalized, and the institution of the Kobzari go back, as I say, basically 400 years. The institution of the Kobzari uh, essentially ended in the Ukrainian SSR, uh, when in the late 1920s and during the 1930s and, and Stalin's radical transformation of rural society, literally tens of thousands of Kobzari were hunted down and liquidated during that period of time. In fact, there was an attempt to totally eradicate that music. Kobzar is also the seminal work of poetry by Taras Shevchenko, 
who in the 19th century became known as the Bard of Ukraine. A little, anecdote, a little note on that, we have wonderful William Shakespeare, we have the wonderful uh, bards around, Robbie Burns. Taras Shevchenko has more statues to him in the world than any other people, including Shakespeare and including Robbie Burns. He's that important. His first work was called The Kobzar. He also suffered exile under, under Tsarist Russia, and his, his poetry and his music is obviously uh, an inspiration to this day. It's also the month of March, which is actually traditionally the month of Shevchenko, but nobody is really preoccupied with that this month. So I will call on to the stage to sing uh, a number of pieces um, and play the uh, bandura that will come from uh, Ms. Ostashevsky and Dr. Hornetkevich. The third piece I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave aside because during, uh, during Soviet times, the national anthem was forbidden. Uh, and this third piece was used as sort of a uh, ultimate unofficial anthem for people to gather around and maintain their Ukrainian culture. We're going to weave a medley of three pieces together for you this evening. The first is a hymn, and I'll tell you a bit about it in just a moment. Dr. Hornetkevich will play the second piece solo on his bandura, Ukraine's national instrument, as you heard a moment ago. The best known repertoire of the bandura are epic ballads known as dume. Many of the Dume tell histories of Ukrainian people, exploits of great warriors and battles. They also tell sung moralistic tales. Tonight, Dr. Hornetkevich will play a shorter traditional folkloric dance tune. Our third piece is an anthem, as you heard, originally and relevant yet today, written for a regiment of Ukrainian soldiers fighting during World War I. We sing it to carry prayers across Atlantic waters and across the wheat fields of Ukraine, the steppes, to those who are defending the country tonight. We will begin with a sacred song, a story of a journey, the terrible journey of the Mother of God to the foot of the cross where her son is dying, a folkloric stabat mater. We sing this hymn tonight thinking thinking especially of the mothers fleeing with their children to safety away from the war in Ukraine, and the mothers of the slain soldiers who are fleeing with them. May God and Holy Mary be with all of them.
I'd like to now invite uh, the chair of the
the modern languages and cultural studies. Ala Mudishkivska. Dear colleagues, students, friends, and supporters, all of us who cherish peace, freedom, and democratic values. My most sincere greetings from the Department of Modern Languages and Cultural Studies at the University of Alberta, where we teach and learn the Ukrainian language, pursue cultural studies, folklore, and offer our study abroad program in Ukraine. 17 days ago, Putin's Russia invaded Ukraine, brutally assaulting its innocent people, those who have been building a free, democratic, and prosperous nation. What is unfolding in front of our eyes is a violent, heartless, unjust, and unprovoked war. Not only a war on Ukraine, but also a war against democratic values, against the rule of law, and against all humanity. Around the globe, we are in a state of agony, watching the horrific events unfolding in front of our eyes. The Ukrainian people are giving up their lives for their country with utmost nobility, bravely combating an authoritarian regime that falsifies history. And the Ukrainian people are fighting for global peace and democracy, not just their own. All of us at the University of Alberta, faculty, staff, students, who have ties to Ukraine, and some of us with parents, siblings, friends, and even children who are under cruel and vicious attack, bear with a heavy heart. But we are grateful for the support Ukraine is receiving right now. Ukraine needs more assistance from the global community not only from our governments, but also from all people, all Canadians, and from each and every one of us. I urge everybody for their moral and material support, assistance, and action. During today's concert, we ask that you donate to the Canada-Ukraine Foundation. Your tax-deductible contribution will go toward saving lives, providing medical supplies, and assisting families with feeding themselves and their loved ones, something that no one, no one could have imagined possible just 17 days ago. Your donation will assist the youngest Ukrainians who are being born in bomb shelters. This is something no new parent could have planned for or even imagined 17 days ago, bringing a baby into a world of ruin. It is up to us to provide them with assistance, remind them that there's hope, that they will live the life they deserve in a free world. When making a donation in the memo box, please indicate U of A, Ukrainian Relief Concert. We are grateful to the University of Alberta's response and commitment, about which we've heard from our president, Bill Flanagan, and our Dean of Arts, Steve Patton. Thank you. I would like to express my deep gratitude to our colleagues in the Department of Music and the at the Faculty of Arts for spearheading, uh, spearheading this important event. My thanks to everyone who was involved for your speediness and professionalism. The Department of Modern Languages and Cultural Studies is a proud co-organizer of today's concert. I would like to invite those who present in person to stop uh, by two exhibits, Journey to Canada, Ukrainian Immigration Experience, and Making a New Home, Ukrainian-Canadian Pioneer Experience, which are displayed in this building. These exhibits are organized by our Cool Folklore Center. And I would like to also acknowledge our supporter, the Canadian Institute of Ukrainian Studies. All of us who organized and supported today's event, we plead for your support and ask for your donations to the Canada-Ukraine Foundation. This is a humanitarian aid for brave and innocent people. Ukrainians are fighting and sacrificing themselves not only for their freedom, but for a democratic and just world for all of us. The world sees the truth, and we at the University of Alberta 
will assist to best of our abilities to keep demonstrating the truth. Now, in, now I invite our student of Ukrainian language and culture, Roxy Ishchenko, to read Ukraine poetry in translation. After the intermission, Alex Averbuch, a Kilim postdoctoral fellow in the Department of Modern Languages and Cultural Studies, a published and celebrated poet himself, will read Ukraine poetry in the original. Thank you. Your support is immensely appreciated. Enjoy the concert. Documenting the first day of dislocation. Can't get rid of a hunger for writing, fasting, orogeny, war. A condition by definition of hardening, tissues cornifying. Under a spell of reverence, a boy that could eat so much ice cream break, so many tree trunks shoot down, so many tanks still has time. By the logic of allegory, on the second day of dislocation, my body ceases to grow, but my heart is still warm. It pounds. Tepid tea, sugarless. Terra firma, besieged by water. Scabby sky in the window. On the third day, a sun somewhere. Rocket launchers grow like self-seeding weed, heat and frost resistant. On the fourth day today, I think what it's like when the nights filled with fire, glowing trajectories of tracers in the Second World War, and how far they land, maceration, dissolution of cells. On the fifth day of fish and fowl, I will fetch at the market, I think, time and again. Examining my teeth in the mirror, my worn out white paper I've used up for writing, gums bleeding, I'm wiped out on the sixth day, a rebirth, a metamorphosis. A dog that got blown up on a trip wire turns into a broken pinky and hurts and hurts. I can't go on. It's an eternal return, a dying off of the human form. And now, now, the seventh day, as it has been written. A small mountain sits on top of my womb, the only one that survived the war in one piece. It got lucky, ran deep into the woods, covered its head with its arms. On that day, it went like this. A shepherd came to the mountain, stopped by its very temple, by its ear and by its throat, at the mouth of the spring. A shepherd is a man with a weapon and a rebel, a shepherd with no sheep, good shepherd, godly pastor. And so it was, that only the weapon remained, only the weapon, heart, soil, kindly shepherd, good shepherd, these are all, these are the same for all. When he came to, a tree sprang out of his chest, a bird flew out of its hollow, barefoot, with hair loose, and somebody killed it, a small mountain, a momentous sorrow. They won't compose any songs because the children of their children hearing about this initiation will jump out of their beds at 4 a.m., frightened by the echo in their spinal cords. Separate parts of death cannot form a whole. A quarter of fate or of body is always missing. The map is worn at the folds. The doors of the house rust hopelessly you are on night watch.
At dawn, saliva becomes poison in every mouth. All these piles of ashes still have names, and they keep repeating their persistent calls, sharp like panicked bird shrieks, too extreme for a song, about a field torn apart by a hail of bullets, about the chornozem that God will rub off in his hand afterwards. All our cities are flying the flags of disease, and our confusion is worse than ever. You ask softly, hoarsely, what are you doing? And your muscles move under your skin, and you breathe in gasps. My love, the apocalypse keeps growing and growing like a tree in the crack of a wall, gnarled, relentless. And in order to deny it, I touch your cheek, collarbone, hip, knee. I kiss you like a war has ended, like fire, like an icon. And the apple of the sun falls, knocked from its branch by a breathing. And the light boils, squeezing windows from their frames. Birds and kids scream, though it should be quiet. It's been a hundred years since everything was canceled. We shouldn't be here either. Rebels and lovers irritate everyone most. An invigorating poison pulsates like waves in the body. Prickly sparks scatter across the skin in the morning. In the sky, the seal was broken. Sing, shine, sleep like animals restlessly, briefly, and the sensation descends. When I embrace you, I hear your heart echoing under the scapula, destroying all prohibitions. Thank you, Roxy. The next piece you will hear is entitled, entitled Melody. It was composed by Miroslav Skorik and was composed for the 1981 film The High Pass. The work has been described as a work that captures all of the pride, pain, and heavenly beauty of Ukrainian culture. Please welcome Edmonton Symphony Orchestra violinist, Laura Vies, and University of Alberta instructor of voice and, and pianist, Leanne Regeer.
Absolutely beautiful. Thank you, Laura and Leanne. <laughs> Abîme des oiseaux, the abyss of the birds, is the third movement of eight from Olivier Messiaen's Quatorze pour la fin de temps, Quartet for the End of Time. It is a composition for clarinet, violin, cello, and piano. This is the third movement, or this third movement is for solo clarinet. The composition was written by Messiaen in 1941 while he was imprisoned at a concentration camp in Görlitz, Germany, which is now in Poland. The piece was composed and premiered in the camp by fellow prisoners. In the preface to the score, Messian describes this movement as, the abyss is time in its sorrows and lassitudes. The birds offer a contrast symbolizing our yearning for light, stars, rainbows, and jubilant voices. Please welcome Rob Spady clarinet instructor at the University of Alberta.
You would not be an authentic Ukrainian or Ukrainian Canadian if you never sang in a choir. The tradition of choral singing in Ukraine goes back many, many millennia, and some idioms are in modern music today. We have the privilege of having on stage an extraordinary organization, the Ukrainian Dnipro Choir, which almost 70 years ago was founded by Roman Soltakevich as a male chorus. In 1974, it became a, a full mixed ensemble. 1976, under, starting under the direction of Maria de Tignac. She continued this for almost 40 years. And in 2011, Irena Shmihelsky became the choir's third director. It has staged full-scale operas, international tours, numerous collaborative performances. Ukrainian choirs were important. Even the great Tchaikovsky, whose grandfather was central Ukrainian, spent his summers in Tsarist Russia basically listening to Ukrainian choir after Ukrainian choir after Ukrainian choir in the summers, looking for inspiration. We have three pieces that we will be performing today. The first is Blauslavid Dusha Moya. Bless my soul, O Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord. Bless my soul, O Lord, and all my being in thy holy name. Bless the Lord my soul, and do not forget all his goodness. Bless my soul, O Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord. The second piece is Latila Zazulia. A young widow is visited by a bird singing to her. In her grief, she basically says, I am alone. My beloved has perished. He lies in the field that together we once sowed, embraced with deep love and dreams like two lovebirds. The third piece is Ukraina, a contemporary patriotic ballad uh, that will take us into the intermission. Our soloist of the second piece, Latila Zazulia, is, if I can read my own writing, Natalia Onestuk, the soloist for the third piece, Ukraina, beloved Ukraine, is Peter Ternowski. Under the direction of Irena Smihevsky and accompanied by Irena Ternowski, I give the Ukrainian Mipro Choir of Edmonton.
takes less than 10 minutes to donate to the Canada-Ukraine Foundation.
Find your seats, we can begin the second half. It's not quite a half, it'll be smaller than a half.
Welcome back. Hope you had time during the intermission to make another donation. <laughs> of course, in the program, you'll find the cufoundation.ca website, in addition to a QR code that will take you directly to that cufoundation.ca website as well, if you are so technologically <laughs> capable. The first, year, the first piece you'll hear in the second half is by Anna Pidhorna. Anna Pidhorna is a Ukrainian-born, Canadian-raised composer, artist, and vocalist. As she describes her composition, Keening, in her own words. The term Keening refers to an old Irish tradition of lamenting the dead. The practice was meant to guide the departed safely into the next world and to help the living express and process their grief. We can grieve a death of a loved one, the loss of a relationship, a medical diagnosis, a long distance move which separates us from those we love, or even our past selves. Grief contains a plethora of often conflicting emotional states, such as anger, guilt, denial, devastating sadness, lethargic melancholy, emptiness. The pain of grief can ravage us for days or sneak up, us, sneak up on us in otherwise serene moments of reverie or in response to the most mundane activities. Relentless attacks of such violent emotions leave us in a state of severe physical and mental exhaustion. Please welcome Shelley Young, Edmonton Symphony Orchestra flautist and instructor of flute at the U of A. U of A instructor of saxophone, Alison Balchettis. U of A alumna, cellist, Laura Wakeman. U of A instructor of piano, Victoria Ricebridge Dapp. And Angela Schroeder, director of bands at the University of Alberta.
I'd like to ask Alex Averbuch to the lectern for more poetry. Thank you. Синь голоборочко. Неможливість повернення. Повернення – це ж не тільки моя теперішня присутність у тому краю, де тривалий час був відсутній. Так можна і подумки повернутися, адже справжнє повернення – це відновлення назв усіх речей, які тебе оточують. Стою під деревом, обліпленим грушками. Такі продовгуваті грушки, ніби маленькі глечики. Хоча це і не якийсь культурний сорт, а звичайна грушка-дичка. Ніяк не можу пригадати її назву. Пригадується тільки, що вона якось називалася. Пригадується груша, яка родить тверді грушки. Груша-кістянка. Грушка, яка довго лежала зірваною. Лежанка, дехто називає їх гниличками. А як же ці красиві грушки називаються? Ніяк не пригадаю. Нічим не може мені допомогти мій давній знайомий, у якого я розпитую про назву цих грушок. Просто грушка та й усе, каже він. Але ж я знаю, що вона якось окремо називається, але я ніяк не можу пригадати, стоячи отут під деревом, обліпленим грушками, такими продовгуватими грушками, ніби маленькі глечики. Епіфанія. Назва, не назва, грушки, символ за ознакою. Бути тим, що незмінне. Юрій Тарнавський, Росія. Країну, що страждаєш на комплекс материнства і обмотуєш інші нації колючим дротом своєї любові. Хіба не знайдеться серед твоїх синів хоч одного, який сказав би? Залиши їх, мамо, країну велетню, ти живешся безборонними книжками, мов немовлятами в дитинцях бібліотек. Я жив би й мільйон років, щоб пройти тебе до краю, опираючися на ніж, як на друга плече. Самостійні, мов непорочні держави сплять у м'яких ліжках своїх границь. Зі столицями напіввідкритими, як уста. А за обрію нахиляється на них твій кусокий Христос з солоним медом сифілісу на губах. Остап Сливинський, сестра. Ми намріяли собі так багато життя, сестро. Там не було холодних сидінь, чекання за турнікетом, безсонних ночей в лікарняному коридорі. Там не було автобусів, у яких будять нас світлом ліхтарика. Там не було запахів йоду і сечі. Ми розганялись на пагорбі і бігли до самої води і пливли по поверхні безодні раніше, ніж встигали подумати. Жалем не вміли користуватись. Довколо любові ходили, як ходять довколо передчасно розквітлого дерева. Ми хотіли прожити життя безсонне й густе, як музика аргентинського берега. Життя цільне, як злиток. А за таким же люгідним курсом обміняли його на радість. І тепер коли нас зачинили всередині душної ночі. Чи зможу я 
я хоч, хоч, хоча б попрощатись з тобою, сестро. Алінка в саду з великим собакою. Скільки ж він жив? Усі діти, всі п'ятеро, на ньому їздили верхи. Коли дійшла моя черга, він вже осліп і крутився на місці, як цуценя, що полює за власним хвостом. Сумний, здитинілий пес. Відтоді стільки сталося всього, що й не відбулося нічого. Добре, що пожежі ніколи не змовляються між собою. І я прослизала між них, що вітри, як сільські шмаркачі, хіба що свистіли мені у слід. Лише ті, що забирали братів і зазирали у каструлі, добре знали свій фах. Зате стільки було рятівників, яким хотіло сміятися в очі. Стільки було вчителів, що я й далі кручуся на місці як на тому старому фото. Маленька жінка, верхи на великому псі. Thank you, Alex. Now, please welcome a U of A music student alumnus, become lawyer, Julian Savarin, cellist. He and Leanne Regeer will perform the very moving Elegie by Gabriel Fauré.
It's amazing what lawyers can do when they're trained properly. <laughs> One of the striking images for me as, as war broke out was the fact that a lot of the international broadcasters were broadcasting from the rooftop early in Kiev. And what was striking for me is that in the distance, looking sort of north, northeast, were several churches, including the church, the church of St. Andrew. That church is located where it is rumored the Apostle Andrew uh, planted a cross. You have two Andres, Andrews on stage tonight, and Andrew is the patron saint of Ukraine. And although Kiev was, for, was founded 5th, 6th century, it wasn't until Volodymyr, who the Russians referred to as Vladimir, in 988, just as you look out for the CNN cameras, imagine Prince Volodymyr taking the entire area of Kiev, the Kiev in Rus, having them march down the hill to the river Dnipro, where they were baptized and accepted Christianity. That was 988. For over a thousand years, Ukrainians have been a Christian nation through Mongol invasions, war after war after war, even through the repressions of an atheistic USSR, people had that faith. And they still have that faith. So it's appropriate that our last group that is taking the stage is bringing to you an element of the musical faith of Ukrainians. Under the direction of Dr. Melanie Turgeon, we will hear three pieces. Uh, it's interesting that Melanie studied, started studying conducting at age 16 under Maestro Volodymyr, again Volodymyr, Kolasnik, who was a defector from the USSR, who had a tremendous influence. For every conductor that was here tonight would have received some tutelage from Kolasnik. The first piece that we will have from the Divine Liturgy of John Chrysostom is the Destoino. My heart froze because this is a work by Mikola Leontovich. Leontovich wrote the quintessential winter Christmas melody the entire world is familiar with that we would call in the Western world, in the Ukrainian, Shadrach, the Carol of the Bells. You can't go anywhere without the haunting melody of Leontovich. Leontovich also wrote a divine liturgy in his profession to our Lord and our Creator. At the age of, the young age of 44 years of age, he was assassinated by a Russian Secret Service agent. That was the price he paid for his faith. The second piece is Roman Hurko, who was actually a student that also studied with Kolasnik, who now lives in New York, who has two excerpts from a liturgy that he has written in the, in the 20, 21st century. We have seen the true light, and may our mouths be filled. And the last piece is Bohorodice Jivo, Hail Mary. All of us are moved by the image of, of the Pieta, the Virgin Mary holding the broken body of the Lord after crucifixion. Ukrainians have a very special, deep relation with the devotion to the Virgin Mary. There are times where the Virgin Mary appears in many books, many songs. We refer sometimes to Mate Ukraina, the mother Ukraine, and the image of the Virgin Mary who prays and weeps for humanity emanates throughout Ukrainian culture. And it is not more, even more relevant than it is today as people occasionally will put down their guns or in the cellars that they are huddled under bombardment will pray now as we speak right now to the Virgin Mary for help. I give to you Kapadakiri who has founded 
uh, an audition choir that was founded in 2010 that does justice to the thousand year old tradition that Ukrainians have with their creator and with the Virgin Mary.
Thank you, Capella Kitty. Beautiful. We would like to conclude this program by singing the Ukrainian national anthem. As the choirs file back into the hall, I would like to uh, thank several individuals and groups that made this concert possible. First of all, thank you to all the performers. Too many to mention you all individually. This concert would not have been possible without you. And including Andriy Hlodyshevsky, my co-host. <laughs> Thank you, President Flanagan, uh, Dean Patton, whose presence at this event shows importance of what this is about. We thank the Department of Music. Thank you to our chair, my chair, William Street, and to Patricia Tao. Uh, to all our fine arts production team, and to Russ Baker and Pat Strain, the Convocation Hall's technical crew. We thank the chair of the Department of Modern Languages and Cultural Studies, Alina Dershkivska, and all involved from her department. A giant thanks to Olesya Lucio Andriyevich on the board of both the Canada-Ukraine Foundation and the Canada uh, Ukrainian Canadian Congress for facilitating the donation aspect of this event. In fact, uh, I just got a note from Olesya uh, requesting if in, there's anybody interested in hosting refugees uh, or uh, providing employment for, um, uh, for refugees, please go to the Ukrainian Canadian Congress website for more information. Uh, a thank you to the Chair of Art and Design, Aidan Rowe, and his team for, for the ad advertisement graphics. A big thank you to many in the Faculty of Arts Advertising and Promotion uh, who have worked extremely hard behind the scenes over the last nine days. And most of all, we thank you, the audience, those attending in person, and those watching live online for donating to an incredibly important cause. Slava Ukraini. Glory to Ukraine. Thank you all and have a good night.